Have you been checking out DC Comics' origin reboot of one of Batman's greatest villains, Pamela Isley, aka Poison Ivy? I'm enjoying it so far. It's kind of like Neil Gaiman's Poison Ivy origin story. Just like his, it also features another plant-based character in Dr. Jason Woodrow, aka Pharonic Man. Poison Ivy is such a great name for a villain, mostly because everyone knows what a pain the real plant is. But what does the character have in common with the real plant, or any plant? Let's explore. Welcome back to the Nerdy Naturalist channel. I'm botanist Dr. Ped Danishkar, and I want to talk about one of my favorite comic book characters, Poison Ivy. Making her first appearance in 1966 in Batman 181, Pamela Lillian Isley was first introduced to be a potential love interest for the Dark Knight. That, of course, was a very different version of Poison Ivy than we have today. She's taken on a lot of plant characteristics, so I'll compare her to plants. Before developing powers and becoming the eco-terrorist she's known for, Pamela had a rare skin condition as a kid that gave her an aversion to sunlight. Can you imagine a plant that doesn't like light? They don't exist. They need light to feed themselves. There are some house plants that can handle low light, like snake plants and peace lilies. In college, Pamela studied biochemistry and botany, where she experimented with plant pheromones, making a drug that makes people easy to manipulate. Pheromones are chemicals released by an organism into the environment to influence the behavior of another organism, typically of the same species. Plants use pheromones typically for sexual reproduction. The release of pheromones by one plant would stimulate a sexual response by another, like manipulating the direction a flower positions itself to receive pollen. Some plants may release pheromones to trick pollinators into thinking they're getting a sexual reward, when in actuality, they're just using them to move pollen. There is no evidence that humans can respond to pheromones. This is because humans don't have the receptors to process pheromones. By way of an accident, Pamela was doused in her own chemicals, giving her manipulative abilities. Throughout the comics and other platforms, Pamela manipulated people with pheromonal releases and occasionally seduced them as well. Poison Ivy the plant certainly has no seductive properties, but there are some plants that could enhance the romance. Ginkgo biloba is said to act as an aphrodisiac by increasing blood flow, lifting desire, and excitement. Red ginseng is thought to increase low libido. And fenugreek appears to contain compounds that the body can use to make more sex hormones like estrogen and testosterone. These plants may put someone in the mood, but they couldn't really be used in seduction. Poison Ivy over time developed a reputation of being both unremorseful and deadly, particularly when it came to protecting the plants and the environment. Poison Ivy the plant isn't commonly deadly though. It contains a compound called urushiol, which will cause contact dermatitis, and not everyone is allergic. The cases of Poison Ivy causing death have occurred with ingestion or inhalation of the plant after burning. If you want to know more about deadly plants, look no further than water hemlock. Water hemlock is the most toxic plant in North America. In the carrot family, it can cause painful convulsions, abdominal cramps, nausea, and death. Those who survive are often afflicted with amnesia or lasting tremors. Nightshade will get you too. It has two toxins, atropine and scopoalamine, that cause paralysis in the involuntary muscles of the body, including the heart. Don't be fooled by its deceivingly sweet berries. One of Poison Ivy's greatest abilities is her connection with the green, which essentially is a life force that connects all plant life together. The DC Comics character Swamp Thing is connected with the green as well. Through her connection, she could feel when plants were being harmed. It allowed her to control and manipulate plants to do her bidding. Obviously, the green isn't real, but there is evidence that plants across an ecosystem may have a connection to each other. They may share a fungal network below ground, which allows them to communicate with each other. The relationship between plants and fungi is referred to as mycorrhizae. In addition, some studies have shown that plants can inform other plants if they are threatened or damaged through chemical cues as well. Our understanding of how plants across an ecosystem may communicate with each other is not yet strong, and more research needs to be done. It was fun examining poison ivy a little bit. Perhaps we'll learn more about her biology and stories to come. If you have any biology questions about any character, please leave a comment. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content.